heard about a sacred place in South India known as the Tiruvannamalai, where people go around the sacred mountain because that mountain itself is called as uh, Agnisthala. So people go around the whole mountain, it's known as Giri production. <laughs> Similarly, in the northern part of India, you must have seen there is a Govardhana Giri production. So which is also where people, people will go around the uh, sacred mountain. So that, uh, that's about the Giri production. There is also very popular now, everyone goes to temple regularly. So there is something known as uh, uh, Alaya production. In Alaya production, there are different types. People go around the shrine, each shrine or each uh, sanniti several times. So the method that they use to go around or do a production is uh, they will always start from the front, front side of the sanniti and go around in a clockwise direction. And when they do it from the east to south to west and north, they may follow different uh, customs and practices. So one such uh, pradakshina is called as uh, Adi Pradakshina, where people take step by step, so they first keep their right foot and then immediately keep the left foot, again right foot, left foot in a very closer way. So that is called as Adi Pradakshina. That is also called as Anga Pradakshina or Saina Pradakshina. In, in Anga Pradakshina, the entire body is light on earth, so where all the parts of the body touches the earth and then they roll down and go in a production of way, in a clockwise direction around the sanati is known as the Saina Pradakshina or Anga Pradakshina. There is also another method people follow is Namaskara Pradakshina. Where people first do the Namaskara, it depends on who is doing it, there's a male or female doing it, they may either do a, a Panchanga Namaskara or a Ashtanga Namaskara or a Sashtanga Namaskara. So when you do that, any uh, uh, one of this uh, Namaskara, they will again go around in the same way, which is called as uh, Namaskar production. Then one more production which you would have seen in uh, Shiva temples, where especially during the Pradosham time or in the Nitya Pradosham or uh, Paksha Pradosham time, people will go through in a different way. Even though they follow the clockwise, but here the rule says, the logic is you should not cross or you should not in, come in between the Nandi and the Lord Shiva. So what they do is they start from the Nandi and go around and go up to Gomukam or the, where the Brahma is installed or the Chantikeshwara installed. Then come back as an anti-clockwise direction and then again go back. Like that, this makes one cycle, one production. So this also called as Somasundara production. The, what, what benefit that we get by doing this production? In a typical case, if I have to quote the temple where the innermost shrine or the Garbhagraha is known as the Sukshma Sarira, from where the energy, the cosmic energy uh, radiates out of the uh, main deity of the Garbhagraha Sanati, where you get the energy is radiated and goes around the Sanati, which will be similar to how a magnetic field force travels around which cannot be interrupted by any insulation, which cannot be prevented, which cannot be, you can't uh, cross over. So what happens is in a magnetic field, the, uh, the force, the magnetic force starts from the main object and go back here also from the main deity. The energy goes out and then comes back to the uh, same body. So anyone who ever cross goes into the sanadhi will be able to receive. It's not a receiving the question of automatically the energy get infused on us, gets uh, into us automatically. By default it gets to us. Even, even when the sanadhi is crowded by good uh, people, so you don't no need to worry and it cannot be even observed by one person, it's not, um, not observed by other person. Everyone will receive it and then it, the energy goes back. It depends on the number of uh, time the puja is happening in the temple, whether it's a one kala puja or a uh, two kala puja or a four kala puja, it depends on that more and more energy comes. When you go around the temple during the puja time, you get more energy. Less the time spent, but you get more energy charged on us. That's how uh, the energy is getting charged on us. That is the reason why people go around to do the production. The next question comes as, you know, how many times I should do production in the temple? So there is no uh, 
definite answers, there is no different opinions based on individual actually. I can't say uh, that okay you go only one time or three times uh, or five rounds or ten rounds or eleven rounds or hundred rounds. It does not really uh, matter here. What matters is uh, when you go around the temple, you will be able to feel the charge on your body which is got, which got infused the cosmic energy. So even if during the puja time if you go even one round, one pradakshina will fetch you that much of uh, energy when you go in a, in a non-puja time. There is also other uh, way of uh, uh, doing the pradakshina like people uh, offer their prayer. When they offer the prayer and uh, when they, their prayers are answered, so what happens is uh, in, uh, as a gratitude they promise or they pledge that okay I will do so this much, this many numbers of pradakshina to the shrine if the prayer gets answered. So either people do it proactively ahead of the prayer or they will do once their prayer is answered once they are uh, they feel happy so they come back and then do uh, either five or seven or enough. Normally it is done, it is suggested to do it in odd numbers. So they do either one production or three, five, eleven. Uh, it, go, it goes up to one thousand eight or one uh, hundred and eight like that. So that's how the uh, production is being done and. Uh, to receive the energy, we need to, uh, you know, be away from all the disturbances. Especially we should avoid using cell phones because the cell phone itself will absorb most of the energy by itself. That means we are supposed to receive but you know the cell phone will receive the energy. So that's why it is always advised don't use the phone or any such electrical or electronic or uh, microprocessor based device which consumes this maximum which is not going to be useful anyway. So if we receive the energy, we get the benefit. So it is better that do not get disturbed by using this phone. Similarly, we should also avoid talking. We should maintain silence when we do the circumambulate in the temple. So this will fetch you more energy and you will get the benefit out of it. And there are some yoga methods which have been suggested for this. One is to go in a, with, in, a, in a folded hands, do the pradakshina or in different type of uh, pradakshina as I told you like Adi pradakshina or Anga pradakshina or uh, like that. One of this can be followed by all but it should be done in a very slowly and uh, with great care and with folded hands and uh, also one can chant mantras or slokas when they do the production. With regard to the number of uh, pradakshina that people, a lot of people have got taught how many times whether in Ganesha should I do five pradakshina or Mahavishnu should we do seven pradakshina or Shiva I have to do five or you know people get different uh, opinions, different suggestions and uh, there is no uh, clear cut uh, answers given to them. So the opinion is uh, if you can derive from the Vedic text depends on how the energy get infused on you, how the cosmic energy gets into you, how you get charged when you are doing your pradakshina. So it depends on the perimeter of the sanadhi, it depends on the time that you are doing the pradakshina. If it is a puja kala, the, the energy will be radiated in, a, in abundance. When it is non puja kala, the flow of energy will be less. So, so it depends on which time you are doing the pradakshina and what is the perimeter that you go around and you know as I told in the beginning the innermost shrine is called a sukhna sarira and if you are and the, the outermost prakara is called as a sthula sarira. So if you are within this uh, area between the sthula and the sukhna sarira you are you are you will be the gainer so you, you can gain more energy. It doesn't mean that no even outside this outermost prakara you will still get it but the, the force or the, the field, energy field will be at a lesser uh, units of measures. So the number of pradakshina is always advised in the odd numbers. You can either do 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11 like that and it can go up to 108 or 1008 uh, pradakshina in different method that I said, told you like either you do a adi pradakshina or you do a normal walking uh, like the pari parikrama where you go around uh, but always see to that you do it in a clockwise direction can do as a Saina Pradakshina or Anga Pradakshina or even Grama Pradakshina like that. So you can follow one of the uh, 
type and then you get satisfied and till such time you get satisfied you can keep going around you don't need to limit yourself uh, uh, in certain certain numbers once you feel that you are satisfied in terms of okay i got the bless i got the i am in a blissful state then you from that point you can stop the production so this is how you can uh, but of course whatever you do there are uh, there are several uh, yogic uh, uh, posture which was suggested so you, normally it is advised that you go in folded hands and do the pradakshina or uh, uh, you you chant some slokas you, you know, or some mantras and concentrate on your uh, mind and then keep going around this will fetch you more result so this will help you in getting the energy faster infused in us so that's about the thing but always see to that uh, you circumambulate moving every step slowly with very great care and uh, with folded hand with chanting mantras or slokas around the sanadhi and you will get benefit by this i hope i have clarified all your doubts about pradakshina and if you still have any more doubts you can always come back to us yeah.